Hi there, in this video we're going to take a look at array lists and how they can be used in much the same way as arrays of objects. So I suppose the first thing to take a look at is what is an array list. An array list is simply a growable array of objects in that it's a, an array of objects that doesn't require you to set the size when you declare and create it. It's, it contains components that are accessed via their index and the size of an array list can grow and shrink as needed to accommodate adding and removing items from the list. Okay, so we can use it in the very same way that we would an array of objects. And really there are no differences between one and the other aside from syntax and how we declare and create it. And the fact that an array list doesn't need a predefined size. They're flexible and dynamic. But unlike arrays, which are available to use in every class, in order to use the ArrayList class, we must import the package before using it. And ArrayList class is um, in the util package, so we import java.util.arraylist in order to use the ArrayList class. Um, fix imports in the correct class in NetBeans will, will do this. So, as with everything, the best way to do this is by looking at an example. So we're going to take another look at the assessment example that we've looked at in previous videos. In our assessment application, we are allowing the user to enter assessment name, type and weighting for a particular assessment on one of their modules. And then they can add assessments, which are then stored in an array list. They can display all assessments stored in the array list. And then la in later videos, we look at searching the array list and uh, deleting assessments from the array list. But for now, we're just going to look at adding assessments to the array list and displaying all assessments that are contained in it. So if we double click the add assessment button here, and you'll see we already have our assessment class and our assessment app, which calls our GUI class. So our assessment object is all mapped out for us already. In our assessment GUI class, we have our add button action performed method. And in here is where we're going to put the code to add a particular um, assessment and store it in the array list. But first things first, up the top of the class, we need to declare our array list. So private array list. And this is the syntax now for declaring an array list. You specify the type of object that you want contained in that list, which is assessment, and that goes inside the angle brackets, and then give it a name. Okay, so we must use the keyword array list, and then in the angle brackets, we use the type of object that we're going to put in that list, and then this is the name of our array list. I'm just calling it a list because it's a list of assessments. Okay, if it was a list of people, we might call it p list, so on and so forth. You'll see here there's an error coming up and that indicates that we have we can't find the ArrayList class because we haven't imported our ArrayList class from the util package. If we right click and fix imports, that will import the util.arraylist up here and now our error is gone, okay? So after we declare our array list, we're going to want to declare any variables that we need. And we're going to need a string to store the name of the assessment and a string to store the type of assessment that it is. We're also going to need a double to store the weighting of the assessment. And then finally, we're going to need um, an integer to store a counter, which we'll see later on. Okay, our counter is going to count how many items are actually in the array list. In our constructor then, we're going to initialize all of those um, variables and we are going to create our array list. So first things first, let's create the array list. A list equals new array list. And again, we need our angle brackets and you may see some examples where assessment is written in here in the angle brackets, but in fact, you don't really need to put that in there, just the angle brackets will suffice. And then round brackets and a semicolon. Underneath that, let's initialize our variables. So name is a new string. Type is a new string. And waiting is a new string. And then, well, waiting is not a new string. Waiting is a double, so it's 0, 0.0. Apologies for that. And then count will initialize to 0 because that's an integer. So that's our constructor. All done. And next thing is our action performed method for our add button. 
okay so first thing we want to do in the add button is we want to grab all of the text from the text fields and store them into our variables okay so let's just put a comment in here get text from text fields just so we can see what we're doing so name equals name tf which is the name of my text field dot get text type equals type tf which is the name of my type text field dot get text and waiting equals now the waiting tf tf dot get text We'll read a string, but in fact, our waiting is an is a double. So we have to double dot parse double waiting tf dot get text. Okay, so we grab the text from the text field, parse it to turn it into a double, and store it in waiting. Okay, and we've grabbed all of the text from the text fields for each of our um, attributes. Next thing we need to do is add all of those details to one single assessment object. So we'll make a new assessment object. Assessment A equals new assessment. Okay. And then we do a dot set name. A dot set type. And a dot set waiting okay and what that does is we have this new assessment object now and it contains the name type and waiting that were originally stored in the text field so we're following all the same steps as we would if we were using our array of objects which we've seen in a previous video and then all that's left to do once we've got all of our details in that particular object we add that object to the array list so i'll put another comment in here add object to array list Okay, and so our array list in this case is called a list. The, met the method that we use is add, and in brackets then we put the object a. Okay, so it's literally adding to the array list. Add is the name of the method. Okay, so previously if we were using an array of objects, we would have had to give the name of the array, the index where we wanted to put it, equals whatever the object is. But here we're just adding this, and what it's going to do is put it in the next available space in the array list. Okay, next thing to do then is to increase our counter because we've added something to the array list. So count plus plus. Okay, so we grab the text from the text fields, create a new assessment object, add all of the details to it, put the assessment object in the array list, and then increase our counter. So we won't see the effect of this unless we can then display all of the data back out from the array list. So we'll go straight ahead now and we'll do our display button. So by double clicking on your display button, you generate your display button action performed method. And then in here, we're going to simply loop through the array list to print all of the contents of that array list. Okay, so for int i equals zero, i less than now previously with an array of objects we would have given the name of the array dot length but in this case it's a list dot size and you have to remember your round brackets because size is a method okay and then i plus plus all right in here then we're simply going to loop through the array of objects and we are going to print the details from each object so j option pane dot show message dialog name plus name well not just name name plus and we want to pull the name out of the particular object now so the first thing we do is a list dot get i which pulls the object out of the array list okay so your get method pulls the object out of the array list and then out of that object we want to pull the name okay so we're saying get the name from the object which you get f 
from the array list. Okay, so get the object out of the array list and then out of that, get the name. And that's literally what we're doing. So if you imagine you have lots of boxes on a shelf and you want a particular item from one of the boxes, take the box off the shelf and then take the item out of the box. That's what we're doing here. Okay, so name plus a list dot get i dot get name plus new line type plus a list dot get i dot get type plus new line waiting plus a list dot get i dot get type got so not type waiting and your semicolon okay so now we've got our J option pane, which is going to print all of the details from each object, from one object from the array list. And then our loop brings us through each object in the array list. You'll see here I have an error message under J option pane, cannot find symbol. That's because we haven't imported that particular class. So fix imports should correct that for us. Perfect. So now let's have a go. We'll play this. So assessment name exam, assessment type, summative, assessment weighting 0.5. We'll add that assessment. Then if we do a project, which is also summative and 0.5 and add that, and then we'll do a quiz, which is formative and it's worth zero. And we add that and then hit display all, we get exam, now the type is going in as null. So we must have done something incorrectly on that. So let's take another look. Oh, see, type tf dot get name for some reason. NetBeans was being helpful again and it changed the name of my method. So I'm looking for the get text method there. So let's just try that one more time. So we play it and we have exam, summative and 0.5 add assessment and if we do project summative and 0.5 add assessment and then let's do a quiz formative and worth zero add assessment and if we hit display we get exam summative 0.5 project summative 0.5 and quiz formative zero okay so that's it in order to add things to an array list just remember you must declare and create your array list up with your global variables within your add method then you must create a new object add your details to that object and then add that object to the array list and then in order to take those back out the things to remember if you're looking for the size of the array list it's the size method and in order to take an object out of the array list it's the name of the array list dot get followed by the index that you wish to get. So if you wanted to get the first index, the first item in your A-list, A-list.get zero. If you want to get the last, A-list.get count minus one. Okay, so it's up all available to you there. Those are the important methods, dot get, dot size, and dot add. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.